In this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to paint a kind of stone texture in Photoshop, similar in style to something like World of Warcraft or Torchlight. Okay, so to start we're going to make a texture. And we're going to make this 512 by 512. Um, since this is a uh, you know relatively small asset, I'll show you the kind of asset we're going to be looking at making. So a kind of stone tile similar to something like this. So you can see it's quite small, um, so we're not going to need a large texture. Even 512 might be um, slight overkill. Okay, so I'm just going to assign a new material to this, take it back to how it was before. Just a standard little model like so. And we can see we've already unwrapped this kind of around the edges as well. Uh, one thing I might just do real quick is just expand that out a little bit. Delete history. Um, I'll make sure you guys won't need to do that. And also, let's snap this by holding down X and just moving on, um, just moving on all axis, and you can snap it to the grid there. Uh, you'll notice how the pivot is on the edge here, and this is so if we duplicate it with Control D and then hold V, we can just snap it along and make a um, make a row of them. So duplicate it with Control D, hold down V to snap, and just snap it along like so. Okay, so um, what we're going to want to do first is export our UVs. So let's just select one of our models, um, load up your UV editor, which is this option here. You can also get to it via um, UV texture editor here as well. And if you just go to polygons, UV snapshot, we'll save this as 512. And I do have a project, but I'm just going to save this on my desktop. I'm going to call it UV Stone Tile. Make sure my format is JPEG, and I have 512 by 512, and just hit OK. So now if we uh, jump back into Photoshop, and we'll just load up our UVs there. Control A to select it, Control C to copy. Go back to our texture, and just paste this over the top. Okay, so in your uh, Layers tab, I'm just going to move some of this stuff around. Uh, make a new layer. We'll drop this below our UVs. And what I tend to do here is use a nice kind of dark, nice kind of dark color in here. We'll just paste that in there uh, to fill that in. Um, with your foreground colour here, just press Alt and back and delete and that will fill in. Then we'll change our UVs. We'll just call UV. And we'll change this to Lichen. So now you can see we get our UV over the top there to make it much easier to paint. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make another new layer and we'll call this... Um, Color select, and what this is going to do is act as our uh, our color select tab. So if we just uh, click on here, um, what we want to do is select our kind of darkest color, and then we work our way up diagonally up the chart here, like so. So maybe this will be our darkest color. We'll paint that in there. Probably can't see that very well, but it'll become more apparent. In fact, if I just turn this off, you can see it there. Um, in terms of brushes, uh, for this particular task, we'll just use hard round. So if you right click and go to hard round, then that means you get a full kind of color rather than any kind of transfer kind of issues. So I think I'm also. Just going to zoom in like so. And you can see we're getting that stepping in color that we need.
just going to move this over here a little bit. I'm also just going to delete out this color because I um, didn't have it on a, a solid brush. So I'm probably going slightly um, overkill on my color select here, but it's okay. Now uh, the I'm not going up to full white. And the reason I'm not going up to full white is because this is stone. Um, we don't want it to go too high up the color table because it's never going to reflect that much. Whereas something like metal would definitely go this kind of high, uh, very high up your color scale here. So I imagine this should be quite a good range. Um, I'm just going to add a few darker ones in though. Uh, so let's just pick on that one and go down. A little bit further. Okay, there we go. So now we have a nice um, color range to uh, to play with. Okay, so the first thing to do then is well, now we add another new layer. We'll stick that there. Uh, the next thing we want to do is set up our brush for painting. Now I already have one set up, um, so I can show you the settings. Um, see, I've got a value brush value brush here. So I'm going to normally have the hardness on 80%, but I'll show you the brush settings and they're pretty uh, pretty simple. Okay, it's not picking up my uh, tablet, um, so I'm just going to have to pause the video and restart photo. Uh, but the first thing we'll do though is quickly save this out as my initials and then siltstone tile. Um, if you plug in your Wacom after you've uh, loaded Photoshop, it won't actually pick it up. Okay, so we are now ready to set up our brush. So if we just go to uh, brush mode here, load our brush settings. Um, so first of all, we want shape, uh, shape dynamics. We want our pen pressure in our control here, assuming you're using a Wacom, which you definitely should be for this exercise. Uh, we'll also put the minimum diameter down to 20. Then if we just go to the transfer option here, again, set this to pen pressure, and we should be able to leave the minimum on zero. Okay, so if you want to, if you haven't already done so, you can right click and save this as a brush preset. I usually call this a uh, value brush, um, but you can save it obviously as whatever you want. And then you are ready to go. So now when you paint, the harder you press, the uh, thicker the line is and the um, more paint comes out of the brush. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pick a kind of mid-tone grey kind of painting. We'll reduce our size down. Um, you can either reduce your uh, size down by um, using the brackets, or you can right-click and scroll the size like this. Uh, I find the best way to actually start is by you can use a larger brush and then gradually kind of go down to a smaller brush. Notice how I have my history tab open here as well so I can use that whenever. If you don't have that open just go to window history there and you can have that have that turned on. Um, okay so what we'll do first then is pick our kind of mid-tone grey and then we'll fill in this kind of center area here. Now you could argue that you could just fill this straight in, but straight away I like to start getting that uh, 
that subtle kind of variation in uh, in the colour. So I'm only going to fill in, say, the centre edge and kind of around here as well. So I'll go over it a couple of times, just so the majority of it is the uh, kind of standard, standard colour. So what I might do is just erase that line out. Obviously, your eraser comes in uh, comes in handy as well. Okay, so with that um, main colour type done, uh, what we'll do is we'll start working our way down on these edges. So obviously what we want is the edges to get darker as we work our way down. So if you um, click the next colour along, what I'm going to do is literally just fill this in like so. Uh, one thing is I, I find it sometimes easier to paint with um, uh, ver uh, vertically and if that's the case you can use the uh, rotate mode to do that. Um, I don't think it will let me do it because it all for some Photoshop every time resets it to uh, DirectX instead of OpenGL. It's really frustrating but um, if you do want to know how to do that you can go to Edit, Preferences And then if you go to performance, tick on use graphics processor, turn on turn off OpenGL. And then we'll just save this again. And then if you Okay, so with Photoshop reloaded and our file back in, you can see I can now go to rotate. And I can rotate arbitrarily arbitrarily, but if you hold down shift, you can also snap to an angle as well. And that'll definitely uh come in useful come in useful later. Okay, so I'm just going to fill a little bit in there. Uh, we won't need these colour tabs after a while as well once we've uh, painted up a few of the sides and so on. Okay, so the next thing we'll do then is I'm going to make a new layer now. So it's always good to keep uh, making new layers and carrying on like that. And uh, we'll decrease our size down and we'll start getting this uh, darker area in here. So again it's useful to get that kind of stone variation in this as well. I remember if you hold down tab you can get rid of all your toolbars and so on if you feel like you don't need them. And if you move on to the next colour, you can use brackets to uh, kind of close this down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on, say, this top edge here, I think. I'm just going to gradually kind of step that gradient in. And the very last kind of colour we want right on the bottom is that one. This is our kind of darkest, darkest value.
Okay, so you can see I'm already starting to get that uh, that nice um, gradient between the uh, between the colours. Uh, a good thing to do now, now you've actually got kind of a clear kind of gradient, you can actually go in now and just by holding down Alt, you can colour pick on various bits, start to fill that, start to fill that in. Remember as well, if you just press Tab, you can go back to this mode, and you can hold Shift and rotate this like this. Like I say, it depends if you find it easier painting vertically or horizontally. Um, also, another good time to shrink your brush on this as well. You can see now a bit more slightly uneven brush stroke. And this is just to get that feeling of the kind of worn, worn stone in there. And also to break up those uh, those gradient lines. Yeah, what you don't want is any of that kind of obvious uh, stepping. It will appear if you haven't uh, gone through and painted this like so. Uh, one tool you can use, you can use the uh, smudge tool or the uh, blur tool as well. And obviously remember the lighter that you press, the more um, the less paint is kind of applied with each stroke. So you should be en ending up going only pressing very lightly for this kind of phase. You can um, obviously go in and just tweak your brush settings if you wanted as well. Um, so I'm going to select this dark colour again and just make sure that in our bottom kind of row here we have that dark colour along the whole line. Along the whole edge. Like so. Okay, so if we just turn off our UVs, you can see we're starting to get that uh, get that gradient now. Okay, so you can save yourself a bit of time here as well. Um, so for a start let's just rotate. And you can see the red line there that tells you exactly you know the right way round the kind of image should be. And what you can do here is just select this area and just clone it. Um, obviously that's going to make it repeat so we will need to, uh, to tweak it. Uh, you can select like that or another way to select is actually to go to your UV, go to your select tool here and make sure you're on just that layer and then just click in there. Uh, you can even, if you just go to select, modify, expand, do it by one pixel, that will just expand it a bit more so you've got the area selected. And if we come down to our layer here we can do Control c Control v now you'll see We've just got that bit there. And if we do edit, transform, rotate clockwise, we can slot that into place there. Duplicate layer again. Transform, rotate clockwise again. Snap that into place. And again, oops, edit, transform, rotate clockwise and we'll paste that in there. So if you turn off your UV you can see that's kind of sitting together well enough. Uh, but we will need to paint some variation in there. So to paint the variation uh, just the same thing again. I might use a slightly larger brush this time and uh, again we'll click on our darker colour. And what I might do is just add a few 